Hey YouTube, gonna do a short video on the overview of that catalytic heater. Uh, I did kind of just a quick look at that in a lantern that I'd gotten uh, a while back earlier this year for Father's Day. This one's a little more in depth, so for those of you out there who might have one and it's just um, maybe don't know anything about it. Uh, it's the Coleman uh, Dial Attempt Adjustable uh, 513-700 catalytic heater. Uh, mine came with the, see if you guys can see that there, the nice little user's guide here. I won't say manual just because it's a little fold out. Um, uh, one thing that I am missing, even though it's in, in good shape, it was uh, made in February of 1967 uh, in Kansas, here in the good old US of A. And um, the only thing I'm missing here is they're supposed to come with a little starter squeeze bottle. Uh, I've looked online, there's a few things, that, you know, it's not the Coleman specific uh, ones, but I've seen a few that I'll have to get to uh, do the startup. I, I, I attempted a startup, kind of just trying to soak it with a, um, just dribbling fluid on it, and um, that didn't work too well. I couldn't get a good even coat, and I, it, didn't, it didn't start up. I'm going to try it again here after this video, uh, take it out in the backyard here, and mess around with it because of course you should do this outdoors not indoors because you get a, um, a decent you know like 24 inches of flame you can't even see my hand here but um, you know you get a good a good flame here so it's not something you probably want to attempt in the garage or any sort of indoor uh, place uh, definitely outdoor activity until you get it started then you can bring it indoors uh, so once that flame by it dies down it's supposed to if you notice here there's no uh, there's no pump. It's all, um, I assume, some sort of vacuum system. Basically, once the flame gets going, it, or siphon, I guess it starts to siphon. There's a wick that runs up through the center, and um, there's you know a parts listing here on the back. I can kind of show you that. It's probably not going to come in very well, but um, there's that like a wick that runs up through the center. So um, I did do because I know it's been sitting for a long time, um, and maybe some of my Coleman enthusiast out there might say that was taboo, but I added a small teaspoon uh, of Marvel Mist Oil to it to help um, clean and loop uh, the internal seals uh, inside here because it's been sitting for a while. Uh, we'll see how that works out for me. Um, you know, I can still get parts for it. Uh, there, there's a website called OldColemanParts.com. I put the link below where there's a lot of reproduction parts for Coleman stuff. You know, some of it's of course not original, but it's reproduction. Uh, so if you've got an old Coleman uh, heater or lantern stove, you can go on that site, and there's other sites, uh, and and find some of the parts you're looking for. If you're lucky, it makes it easy if you've got this, because like I said, there's part numbers in here, and you can cross-reference a lot of these parts and find the exact part for your specific model. Uh, so once it's lit. You know, it dies back down. If you need to um, uh, put it out, it's got a little snuffer here. You just slide that over here. That kills it. After it's cooled down, it says that it won't spark a flame, but it highly suggests that, um, that you drain any fuel that you have out of it, which would be kind of a pain. Um, you know, in my application, I'll probably mainly be using it in the garage in the wintertime. Uh, not uh, out camping and stuff because uh, I do have some other heaters that I could use for that just because transporting it kind of seems like it might be a little bit of a uh, pain so that was just the like I said the quick overview there's you know high low medium settings here on the side uh, the fill port here on the back you can see that but this drops down it's just you pull out on these pop that up this is just to you know help kind of protect people from touching it directly so there's the fill port uh, of course it always says always use uh, quality Coleman fuel or white gas uh, and do not use leaded gasoline uh, it will ruin your heater <laughs> nice little note for you there so there's just like I said another overview um, I won't tip it because I got fuel in it I was going to say the bottom there's a little bit of rust on the bottom around the where it's stamped in the right the manufacturing information uh, I, I sanded all that out and I'm going to repaint it just to, you know, because I don't want the tank to rust. And, you know, of course, then I'll have a leak. Thanks for watching. It's Nomad76. All right, after watching a few videos um, on YouTube, I saw that it basically you turn it upside down. 
um, until you get this wet spot here I noticed a few drips leaking out instead of using the little uh, squeeze bottle to uh, wet the whole top which is according to the uh, Coleman instructions uh, everyone claims that this is actually the better way to get it to light off so we'll see how this works okay so now fast forward about five to eight minutes here um, and I know you guys can't see the flame there or well there is no flame now it's actually burning down inside the, the matting in here um, uh, you know I was gonna do a night shot but I figured you might be able to see here on the concrete the heat coming off of it but uh, so just uh, one key tip here <laughs> I forgot when I um, when I tipped it over I had it I knocked it down into low position so it didn't light the first time so I had to turn it back upside down uh, one additional time re-soak kind of a, a spot right here in the center and then um, uh, relight it with it in the high slash start or start slash uh, high position uh, and you know we had a flame for um, about two three minutes and then it died down and now I've got uh, good uh, good heat coming off of it thanks for watching